Hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian, hope everyone's doing well. I have a bit of a unique review for you with this video and the accompanying blog post, which will be posted in the description below. Usually when I do reviews, it's watches or sometimes accessories like straps, watch cases, that sort of thing. But today we're gonna to be looking at watch applications for mobile devices. And specifically, we're gonna be looking at Watchy, which is an iOS app, so iPhone users, sorry, Android peeps but it's an iOS only app for managing your watch collection. Now, there are a few different watch applications out there if you're looking for something to keep track of, of your wonderful collection. And now there's not a lot out there, keep that in mind. If you go looking on the app store for watch applications, you're going to get a very limited number, but Watchy is one of them, that's one we're looking at. There's things like Watchbox, um, Chrono 24 has a watch collection feature and there's a few others and then there's sort of news apps like Watchville and there's also watch accuracy timers out there like Tool Watch and a few others. Now this is one of these reviews where you really need to take a look at the blog post to sort of get the full effect because there I have lots of screenshots, I'm going to have a lot of textual description. The blog post has like three different sections. The first is sort of information about what watch collection apps are out there and shows screenshots of a couple of them, Watchbox and Chrono24 specifically. I throw in some screenshots of Watchville, which is a news only app, but that's there. I also make some comments about things like watch databases and what that would entail. And then I do a screenshot walkthrough and sort of feature overview of what Watchy provides as a watch collection application. So you wanna look through that. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through using the app and show you the features and stuff like that some of the differences and things like light mode, dark mode. Uh, I'll point out the versions that I'm using, all that sort of stuff. But if you really want the full effect, check out the blog post on watchcomplications.com. Look at this beautifully snowy day outside. Ugh. Now, not everyone's gonna want to deal with putting their watches in an application and managing their collection that way. A lot of people, like I have in the past, use a spreadsheet maybe just to keep track of what you've got and how much it costs and some of the basic specs around the watch. But it can be really nice to have an application where you can see what you've got as you're kind of going through your day. You can keep track of things of like when you wear it, uh, pictures of what the watch looks like, if you want to share it with somebody, and if you want to compare and contrast certain things as you're thinking about what to maybe keep, what to flip. This application has all of those sorts of great features. And I'm going to point those out as we go along through the video and if you look at the post. One of the reasons I've really enjoyed using Watchy and enjoyed doing the write-up and doing all the screenshots and everything for the blog post is because in my day job, I'm a computer science professor. So I'm in software engineering and application development. I teach it to students. Um, if you've read much on my website or I drop hints once in a while, you may have already known that, but I'm a programmer. That's how I make all my money for the watches. Well, I really understand what it takes to make an app. I can tease out you know, the what's, the wherefores, uh, the implications behind making little changes, how difficult it is to uh, keep an architecture you know, within certain scope. And so I, I understand application development is what I do. And so I've really taken this on and from that perspective professionally. So I get to look at something like I do in my normal day job, but it also is related to watches, which is great, an iOS app. And the developer of Watchy is just a truly wonderful uh, individual. I've gotten to know him over the past couple months. We've really developed a friendship. That's just because of the professional connection, but we talk almost daily about different features and updates. Uh, he's very active in terms of updating point releases. So if you're looking for a watch application, it's gonna get updated on a fairly regular basis where feedback is welcomed and at least uh, listened to, considered seriously. ANSI is the guy that does that sort of app development. Just a really wonderful guy, and that really matters. Developers matter, not only what they create, but who they are, and it shows up in their product development. At least that's what I tell my students. In the blog post, you will find some of that computer science humor, so I'm not gonna apologize for it, just the reality. And as I mentioned, it's an iOS only app. It's not really even optimized for iPad. There's no Android version. So that is one of the limitations of Watchy. And I'm going to go through and talk about pros and cons, sort of quirks, and really, you know, the pros and great features that are in it. So I'll give that compare and contrast, but it is iOS only. And one of the things about working with the developer on this again and sort of collaborating with him and what I've been excited about being a programmer myself is that I wanted a desktop experience. I like also looking at my watches on, on a bigger screen, not just on my iPhone. You know, it's nice to be able to carry it with you, but 
you know, there's something about a full screen experience, which is a little bit nicer. At least that's my opinion personally, but you know, it's great having the app, but I also wanted a desktop experience. And I thought in the past about why not just program something myself for my watch world. And, but I went looking for watch apps, found Watchy, uh, really loved it. And it's a reasonable price. It's only $4.99. You know, I you don't pay for phone apps too often, but this is one that's really worth it, I think. But I wanted a full desktop experience. And so in my collaboration stuff, what I've also done, which will come along in a different video and different post. So there will be this one that covers specifically Watchy and features and all that sort of stuff. And then I'm going to have another post after this and a video that covers what I'm calling Watchy Browser, which is an application that I've written actually, and will share via my website. And then I'll show videos, screenshots and that stuff. But I've created an interface. One of the best features about Watchy is that it exports your watch data to a CSV file. It's comma separated value file. It's just a spreadsheet, a very basic spreadsheet. And what I've done is I've built both a JavaScript and a PHP uh, front end for it, so an interface in my web browser, so that it opens up those CSV files that I export from Watchy, and I can view my watch collection on my desktop in the web browser. And there's going to be the JavaScript version I'm going to put out there for everybody to use because it doesn't require uploading the file or anything like that. It stay all the information stays on your computer, and then I've got a PHP version which I do for myself, which has more a little bit more fancy stuff going on, and I've got my images for my watches and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to show you all that in a second post. So. Here we are, first post, watchy overview and features, and then second post, I'm gonna talk about something I built to help view the watch collection data. And I think, and I hope you're gonna like all of that. Now, as we switch to looking at the application and looking at it, keep in mind that this has to flip into a uh, portrait view. So we're gonna move from landscape into portrait. So the screen is gonna shrink up a little bit, just that's fine. It only works in, in portrait mode. And that's the way you'd want to view this uh, watch application and the data that's in it. You might have to go into theater mode or full screen mode to really see some more of the details. If you leave it in a small screen on YouTube, you may not see uh, the, the iPhone screen as well as you could if it's bigger. So wrist check, today I've got on a Christopher Ward C65 uh, Trident. This is the GMT Pepsi version. So this is a fairly new model, but I picked it up in a nearly new cell for 30% off. Didn't want to pass that up. And I've been thinking about getting one of these for a little bit, but the cell was the right time. I, I have several of the Tridents. I'm a fan of them. And again, Christopher Ward, I, I like I like them because you can get a decent watch for a reasonable price. Um, here's what the back looks like. The blue and the, and the red on this for the aluminum bezel insert is very well done. I don't know how long... Uh, they'll keep this particular model in production, but it's a wonderful case. This new eye catcher case is just beautiful. Um, thin profile, uh, slim on the wrist. It's got that vintage, you know, box crystal on it. It's just a really, really cool looking watch. And this is on a webbing strap that's going to get nice and worn and start to look like a, a watch, tool watch should look like. And yeah, that's good. But anyway, Watch is my favorite watch app that's on the market right now. And I'm going to say this again after we take a look at it, but it's an app that I highly recommend and you need to take a look at it if you're wanting to manage your watch collection digitally. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are on my iPhone. I'm on the record screen. I just want to note that I'm in dark mode currently. You can see there I am going to go here to the home screen. In the lower right corner in the dock, you can see there is the Watchy app. It has become an app I use every day, mostly because of the wear today feature, but also because as I enter watches from my collection into the app, it earned a place in the dock because I use it every day, other apps I don't. So we'll open it up. I have some of my collection in here, not all of it. Again, as I mentioned on the blog post, if you look in my list of pros and cons, there's not a watch database that this is like sort of connected to that you can just say when you add a watch, you can just pick you know the brand and pick the model and it will pull in all the data. That's not how this works. And that's not how most watch apps would work with a collection because maintaining a massive database with all the watches being produced and models being produced is just a task that's not going to happen. Now, Watchbox does have something of a database that has uh, an array of models but and watches and brands, but it's incomplete, doesn't have everything, and you're always going to be disappointed. And I like entering details myself because, well, I like making sure they're correct. But 
I say more about that in the blog post, but if you were a, a programmer or a database person, you would understand why that's a particularly large task. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through the features sort of one by one, show you the pages and whatnot. And so I'm going to start up here by clicking on the file folder in the top left. And what that does is that's a sort. So I could sort by something like movement type and it would arrange those for me, you know, put group those together, purchase date, watch status. You know, I've been keeping it by brand and model, which is sort of alphabetical in terms of by brand and then by models within that brand, which is, you know, kind of a typical way you would see things sorted. If you have both front, let me just show you real quick. If you go into a specific watch, you can have both a front picture and a back picture. And so if you're on the home page like this and you click the circular arrows again in that header, you can flip all of the pictures to the reverse, which is pretty cool. All right, if I click the little book icon up here, you get a collection summary. It tells you how many total watches in the collection, how many are in the app that you've sold, you know, total cost and what you've earned back through selling, um, profit, etc., and what you may have lost uh, after selling. Of course, most watches aren't an investment of any sort, so don't get into watches for investment, but this is just a nice little quick summary of the watch collection. Not even close to my total collection, but again, just giving you an idea of what these features are like. You can see the watchy icon there in the middle of the header. It's a little bit squished. I expect that will get fixed soon. If you look at the little eye in the top header again, what that does is that rotates through sections of the watch information that you got entered for each individual watch. So this is like the wear information. You've got movement information. You can see as I hit the information icon in the header that these little white dots, there's a black one, it's cycling through the pages for each of those. So there's the purchase and sell information. Go down here to one that I've sold. Like there's a couple right there. I sold my Mercer Wayfair too, my Orient. And then we've got the age of the watch from when I bought it and how long I've owned it, that sort of thing. And then we're back to model. You know, one of the things is I get up and I'm like, sometimes I pick my watch first. Sometimes I pick the clothes I want to wear first. But I, I do like to match my watch with my clothes that I wear in a given day. But if you want to get out and about and you don't know what to wear, you see the crossed arrows here in the top right of the header click on that it's going to draw a random watch for you and say here it is and you can say uh you know what? i really don't want to wear that one draw again or you could say wear today which will mark it as the watch you're wearing today and add that to your wear stats we can go through and add a watch so i'll click on the plus you can see you have your front and your back pictures you just tap on those you get the uh, camera where you can take a picture if you're wearing it that day or you can go to your photo gallery and pick an image one of the nice things about adding an image is that once you select it in let's say the photo gallery you can move it around you can zoom in if you want on the watch and then it will you know crop it and make it look the way you have selected it in the app so that's nice that it's got that flexibility now i'm right now in dark mode so you can see that the uh, text and the shading isn't quite optimized for dark mode. I like being in dark mode. I've been using it in dark mode. It's really, it's okay, but it's going to look a little bit better in light mode. You can see that it's more optimized for that. So you can enter the brand. That's just a text entry. Model's just a text entry and year. We've got the nice selection list here. And so you can select what year something is. Reference, open text entry, same with serial number. Movement type, you have some choices here. Now, not everything you can imagine is in here, and these are being added. For example, I mentioned to the developer the other day that you really need to add mechanical quartz, for example, and probably another. When you have a list like this, you always sort of need another, and those things will be probably in the next update. But there's things like that. You can say how long of a power reserve. Now, this field sort of becomes pointless if you've got a quartz, but you can free enter the movement the caliber. And then there's the uh, the beats and really the hertz. So 28.8, 4 hertz. And again, this is something that you don't need if it's a quartz watch, but it's something that people might care about having. Now, what's nice is you don't have, you're not required to enter any of these. You can leave them blank if you want. You can see there's diameter, which gives you, again, selection. Again, the detail of this is really nice in the app because you can select, you know, tenths if you want, which... I personally really like being able to select tenths. 
and say specifically what the diameter and thickness and stuff like that is. Lug width is what you might think of as strap width, and there's no lug to lug measurement in here yet. Again, that's a that's a feature that I've suggested might be good to have. A lot of people like knowing the lug to lug of a watch, but we got diameter, uh, lug width, thickness, which is height, case material gives you a nice selection, and this does have about everything you could uh, probably come across in here. Uh, one that is, you can see plastic is even in there. Uh, rubber's been added. This is version 1.7.3. I should mention that because on the blog post, I have screenshots from 1.7.1 and 1.7.2 and 1.7.3. I was doing this review for <laughs> over a couple weeks, and I said the developer's active, and he's updated it several times. So there's a lot of uh, possibilities in here. Most of the, you, them you'd have covered. You're probably not going to come across material you don't have. If you don't, just you know let someone know, and I'm sure it will get updated. Bezel material, again, I like having the difference because a lot of divers, for example, have stainless steel, but they might have an aluminum bezel insert, and I have a lot of divers like that. And it's nice being able to choose the different materials there. Dial color, just your basic colors. Again, I've not come across one that isn't covered by one of these generic options. Glass, you know, is it sapphire? Is it mineral glass, acrylic, that sort of stuff. Crown type, regular, or most of mine are like, for example, like screw down. There's protected, so some simple options there. And waterproof, which is about to be renamed water resistance, has, you know, your ATM measurements for water resistance. Complications is one of these sections where there are six static complications you can enter for a watch. Now, some watches might have more than that, but for the most part, this is going to cover most bases. And the one that it starts you with is the most common one, which is the date. And then you can have, you know, day. And so if you have a day date, for example, you put in both day and date as separate complications there. But there's dual time, center seconds, alarm. It's got all kinds of stuff in here. Um, dead seconds, five minute repeaters, flybacks, GMTs, is it a hacking movement, so on and so forth, the moon phase. Um, yeah, so it's got lots of lots of different complications in here. Again, maybe not everything on the planet is in here right now, but uh, things get added as time goes on. You know, freeform text, who you purchased it from, usually from, you know, maybe it could be a dealer, it could be from the company directly, the date, and the warranty, which is usually a year or two years, in some cases like four or five years out, and the price you paid for it, and the set completeness, which is nice. You know, a lot of people care about this, particularly if you're wanting to resell at some point in the future, and then there's sell information, and then there's the notes and history log, which you can keep little notes about the watch for yourself if you want, and if you click the insert date stamp, what it puts is a little date tag next to the note that you just entered. So that is the add watch feature. Now you see there's these plates underneath the date called keeper. If I scroll down a little bit here, you can see here's a, a watch that I'm willing to flip. If I go down here, like the Mercer, the Orient, there's no plate there. That's eventually going to be sold once that feature gets implemented. But that is the watch status. And so if you have added a watch and you go into it, now we will we'll just walk through the watch thing. You can then go into the watch. If I wanted to go back to that screen, I could go to edit and there I can go through editing the watch. But go back here. Here's the watch information. You can click where today and it'll give you something like this. You can say confirm or cancel. And again, this will increment the risk stats and counters. It can't be undone if you say I'm going to wear this watch today. And you know, it gives you these stats like when's the last time you wore it, days since you last wore it. Uh, out of all the watches in your collection, you've, I've worn this one once, for example, since I've put it in here. My wear rate's 9.1%. And then it's pieces together that's nice in the movement. It takes it, the settings that you put in when you entered the watch and turns it in sort of a, a text form, a sentence form, with about the movements and the power reserve, etc. And there's serial number. So there's all the data, you know, we would have entered about this particular watch. And here's the status. So if you click on status, there's lots of things you see. It's broken, it's in a safe service, it's on the watch winder, um, it's being serviced, willing to flip it. Uh, like I said, it's sold, it's going to get added to this list. But if this watch is a keeper, and then you can tap here again on that choose watch status tab, and we've set the status of a watch. 
again back on the screen here now there's each watch has this little gear right above the wear rate so if you click on that little gear you get that technical info pop up so you don't have to go into the screen about the watch you get the general overview there and then you see there's this k badge above the wear rate as well if i scroll down to the ones i've sold you see an s so these are the keeper and seller rate if i click on the k there for example that that marlo sands this is interesting where it what it's doing is it's doing an average i explain this more on the, on the blog post it's doing an average of for example diameters the average diameter in my watch collection is 40.6 millimeter and based on how close this is to my overall average in terms of diameter, thickness, dial color, it's saying, how likely are you to keep this watch or should you maybe consider selling it? So if you click on that keeper rate, it gives you the description about what this is. The closer to 100% this rating is, more likely this watch is a keeper. It's a fun little feature. My keeper rate for this is 61.1%. So it's probably likely I'm gonna keep this watch in my collection. I keep watches that are you know, averaging those specs, in other words. You can see I've worn this one 27.3% since I've entered it into the, the database here. So keeper and sell rate, if I go to the cell, one of the cell ones here, I clicked on the Mercer Wayfarer 2. Um, you can see information about it and click on the sell rate, gets the description. Again, I describe this more. You can read about it more. You can just pause the video, look at those descriptions. But yeah, keeper rate, sell rate, fun feature um, to have in this particular little app. Let's look at some of these things here at the at the bottom then. You can see here's the watch screen, which is highlighted. So I'm on the footer. Click on the warranty. You can add a warranty, which allows you to, you just tap on the card there and then you can go to the camera photo gallery. Take a picture of your warranty card. Some brands ship with warranties, some don't. And you could add that if you wanted to. You can keep track of service. So you can say what watch and service center when it starts ends description of the service uh, here's service reason you know you can enter text and stuff like that service cost so you can keep track of watches as they win they get serviced and so on and so forth and before i do the accuracy i'm going to go over here to the settings so some of the things you can do which really great features in this app is you can show the warranty end date now if i turn that on and i go back to my watches you'll see that the warranty information pops up right above that uh, status plate so right above like keeper for example or, or willing to flip you see the warranty until i like keeping that particular thing uh, hidden same thing with wear rate i could turn wear rate off but whoops i like um seeing the wear rate so you can see it's gone above the little gear and k badge there but i like keeping that on show wear rate you can hide sold watches if you want so like you could turn that on which is nice show technical details keep a rate sell rate button so basically turns the gear and the and the keeper sell bat or keeper sell badge on and off there's the history log settings i'm not really using it right now but can log some events like logging each wear of the watch even though there's the wear stats that are keeping um track of that already you can log it in the notes for the watch if you want you can log every 10th wear you can enable um, the history if you want compressing watch images depends on how much phone space you have and then we have here a really cool feature which is export csv what you can do there is you tap on that you can share it with people that might be of interest to you you know you can email it airdrop it so on and so forth so that's a wonderful feature i've taken advantage of that because as i said in the next video and the next uh, post on my website watchcomplications.com i am going to show you a f web front end i have built for taking the data that gets exported from my watches and i can look at all this information on my desktop so that's going to be a fun video and thing to share with you and i will share it all with you and you can even use my website to look at your watchy data if you want on the full screen so that's the export CSV. So those are the, that's the settings tab. Let me go back to the watches. I want to show you something else. <clears throat> I'll go into my Atelier Win. This is a beautiful new watch I have, actually. It's a porcelain dial. It's kind of really unique. So let's scroll down here. One thing at the bottom is you can, after you've added a watch, remember in the entry, what it ended with was sort of the notes and history log. But if you added the watch and you go back into it, you can see there's the wrist stats. You could reset them if you want to. A really other cool feature is 
this document. You can export to PDF. Like say you wanted to sell the watch, you could create a for sale ad. But let's just create, this has the front and back. So you tap on that PDF and say, oh, okay, I want to save that to my files. And I can say, okay, let's let's save it to, I want to save it over here to stuff. I'm going to save it there. So let me go over here to my phone app, go to files, and I can go in here and look at that. I've got a PDF of the watch. And then there's, a, you know, if some people might want to print this out, save it, you know, keep it in a filing cabinet somewhere, but it's really beautiful uh, PDF that has the information about the watch. But this is particularly, again, useful. If you want to put an ad up, like on a group or something, or Reddit and say, I want to sell this thing, it's just, it's just, it's pretty cool. So let's go back in here. You see there's ones that are tagged for sale and whatnot. So export to PDF, export to CSV. It's just really cool features. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is accuracy. Now, there are some standalone timer apps out there that are pretty good, but it's nice having it all in one app. So you can, let's hit the plus button. You choose your watch for measurement. Okay, so we've got that. You can see the instructions here. Tap the button when the second hand of your watch reaches precisely 12 o'clock. So once your watch gets to 12 o'clock, hit the start button, and then you can confirm, you know, make sure it's at the right minute, and then your test is in progress. You really want these to run for, the app recommends minimum of 12 hours, really 24 hours plus is better. You can have multiple tests running on the same watch simultaneously. You can have multiple watches running simultaneously. So this is really flexible. And what you can do is you can check intervals if you want. You don't have to necessarily end it. So I can hear you say end, and you make sure you have it at the right you know, minute. Let's say let's actually move to 2104, confirm. It would tell me what the current rating is. And I could say finish and save it, or I could say continue measuring, which then we go back to sort of the in progress. But if I end this, of course, I'm not actually testing anything right now, but let's confirm it and end it. And then we would have that status. Now, also in here, when we're on this screen, we can tap this button down here during measurement. The watch was, let's say it's on the wrist. You can choose the environment. And, it, you know, mechanical watches are going to be different, plus or minus, in how they're losing or gaining based on whether they're on the table dial up, on the wrist. You don't necessarily have to set this if you want, but let's say it was on the wrist. And let's confirm that. And there we are. Now, let's end this. I want to end this real quick. And let's confirm this, save this. And now once this is done, you could still go back in and you could change the environment. You click on wrist here. Say, no, actually, that was on the table dial up. And set that. There we go. And you can maintain a list. And again, you can sort this by watch, by accuracy, in progress measurements. Again, lots of variety of options. And with everything on this, whether it's the warranties, the service settings, and accuracy rating, you can go or watch. You can always just swipe left and you get the delete and there you go. So those are the features. That's the navigation around the Watchy app. You can see it's very unassuming. It's not tied to anything. It's not restrictive at all. It has a lot of detailed information that you would want to know about your watch, particularly if you're a watch nut. And things are constantly being updated and added and it's just extremely well done. It's not crashed on me once. I've been using it daily for weeks, well over a month, and it has not crashed on me once. That's really good sign. There are other watch apps out there that do not have that sort of behavior that crash in a little bit more buggy. So it's done really well. Very, very happy with this app. Now, in terms of the key features, the pros and the cons, I really would suggest looking at the blog post because I just bullet those and you can see them real quick. You know, there's a few little design quirks, like for example, the logo, or there's, okay, sold isn't a status, for example. The warranty is pretty basic. Basically, you have to take a picture of it yourself and it's just a saving of a picture. It's not like entering information. The accuracy timer, it's okay. It may not be as good as some of the others that are just independent apps for just timekeeping with like graphs and fancy stuff. But, you know, it, it does the job. It, it tells you the data you need to know. And so, you know, not too much to complain about that. You just can't beat the export though to PDF and CSV if you care about maintaining uh, data in other ways on your watches. And again, the, maybe the biggest con would be that there's not a watch database that when you go to add a watch, you have to enter everything. Again, I like doing that. It, you know, my watches are my watches. It's a personal thing for me, and I, and I don't mind that. 
And if you're going to have this app, just enter a watch whenever you wear it for the first time since you've put the app on your phone. That way it's not honors, you're not like sitting down in, on an evening and entering all your watches. You can do it over time as you wear them. It's not that onerous and you might have to look up some stuff, you know, like, you know, what was the uh, purchase and when and how much did I pay for it and that sort of stuff. But do it once, it's in there and you're good to go. You, you're better off for it. Trust me, just, just trust me. If you're interested in it, you could create your own watch database and create an API for developers and make a fortune, but that's your call. I think the draw feature is pretty cool too. It's just, yeah, <laughs> sometimes you just can't decide. Well, let the phone decide for you. That's pretty neat. And, uh, you know, Watchy, thank you, Ansi. It's a wonderful app and I'm loving it. All right, well, there's a look at Watchy. And if you're in the market for a watch application to help you manage your collection, seriously, take a look at it. Not only because it's a great app with just a great array of features, but the developer is great as well. And it's going to get regularly updated. It's really fun to interact with your watch collection. Don't forget that there's going to be another video and blog post that shows my sort of contribution to this and builds a sort of web front end for interacting with your watchy data. And I'll share that with everybody. And I'll even put the code on GitHub so that if you're a programmer or no one, they can interact with it that way as well. So yeah, for any type of collector, you know, that just has lots of the good detailed information and specs you can keep track if you're wanting to create PDFs and, and ads for selling watches, if you're wanting to compare what's worth keeping, what's not, you want to keep track of things like warranties, you know, accuracy timer, it's all there. And it does it in just an unassuming style. It's just a really well done app that doesn't have a lot of the issues that some of the others do tied into a larger ecosystem. There's accounts, you know, and a bunch of overhead, a bunch of frills. Now, this is for any watch collector wanting to simply just keep track of their collection. And I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Please do consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. You can hop over to watchcomplications.com and subscribe there if you want an email notification whenever I publish a new blog post or do giveaways, that sort of fun stuff. You can follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. Again, everyone, I'm Brian. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a good time.